them back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Ah. Uh, I do know I'm part of a beauty YouTuber growth group, however, uh, which is a bunch of ladies that are small YouTube channels supporting each other. Their links are in my description box below. Once you finish watching my video, it would be blooming awesome if you'd like to go across and check out some of their videos. Tell them you came from uh, Mad Bomber at 4F Beauty. And, uh, you know, let them know you're enjoying it. Now, today's film. Normally, I show you first impressions. But because I had the darling husband's cold last week, it gave me a chance to check this out in much greater detail. Now this is the pink lemonade pigment. If you can't see that logo very well, I'll stick it up there. Now, you can't actually buy this pink lemonade pigment yet. I know, I know. Don't shout at me. Pink Lemonade is a group on Facebook and it is one of the friendliest kind of beauty oriented orientated groups that I'm in. I'm in a lot of groups on Facebook. Um, to be quite honest, some of them can be a little bit bitchy. We know what women can be like, don't we? You know, let's not put too fine a point on it. Women in a big group. Can get a bit bitchy. It's just what happens. Oh, I'm understanding myself. But Pink Lemonade is a really friendly group. It's a lot smaller than a lot of the groups you're going to see out there. Um, <clears throat> and because of that, everyone's so supportive of each other. There's regular competitions, there's raffles. The majority of the chat, admittedly, is about makeup, but it's not just makeup. It, it's kind of a. You got your best friends round on a Friday night, you're all in your PJs. You got a glass or something, alcoholic if you drink alcohol, non-alcoholic if you don't drink alcohol. And you're having a good old chat about what's gone on through the week, what you've enjoyed, what you haven't, new makeup you found, new makeup you want to try, new makeup you do not want to try. Um, and that's that's kind of the whole ethos of the group. It's it's camaraderie, one for all and all for one. Not the three musketeers. But Lemonade. So, enough of my waffling. You want to see how this pigment goes, don't you? Hmm? You want more details. You want to know how you can get your hands on a bottle of that pigment. Well, if you want to find that out, you're just going to have to watch my video. <laughs> Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Um, sorry if my voice is a little bit croaky still. I am recovering from the cold that my husband so kindly shared with me. Um, I will have already shown you this, but I'll give you a nice little close-up now. This is the pigment that is the star of today's show. Don't concentrate on me, concentrate on the pigment, please. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the pink lemonade pigment, and as you can see, it's a gorgeous sort of um, baby pink. Well, actually, no, not baby pink, more of a dusky pink with kind of a gold reflect to it. Super, super pretty. Um, Pink Lemonade is actually... Um, I'm in a lot of groups on Facebook. Um, in my description box is the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group links. All the girls in there. It's a little group of us that try and encourage each other and promote each other and just, just try and help each other grow as small channels. Um... But I'm also on a lot of different groups on Facebook um, and this particular one, Pink Lemonade, is by far the friendliest non-YouTube beauty group. <laughs> by that I mean um, it, it's, a ma it, it's a group that people were drawn in together for the love of makeup but they discuss a lot of different things. It's like it's like having your girlies round on a Friday night, putting your PJs on, sticking a mud pack on, opening a bottle of wine and having a good old chin wag, you know. That's what Pink Lemonade is like. Um, 
and I just it, it's it really is a supportive place. I've not had, I've not seen a single person on there be rude or disrespectful or dismissive of anybody else. Um, super supportive. There's all kinds of levels. There's like entry level. There's there's my level. There's ones that are so much better than me that you know they should be having the millions of subscribers. Um, you know that your your Mannies and your Jeffries and your Nickies and all that I've got. You know they've just got skills, man. I, mean, just, I just look at some of the, the the stuff they produce and I, my jaw hits the floor. Um, some of them have got YouTube groups. The majority of them haven't. Uh, YouTube groups, YouTube channels. So that's what I mean about it being a non-YouTube based beauty support girly, chatty. It's linked below. If you want to come join the fun, you know, hit, hit the link and just join in the madness, basically, because we're all a little bit, to quote the Cheshire Cat, most everybody is mad here. Right. Um, I'm going to do my base as in my foundation after I've done my eyes because whenever I'm working with loose pigment no matter how careful I am I always spread it down me and that's me not the pigment no matter which pigment I use if it's a loose pigment it's gonna end up on my front I am still battling with these tops I've got about six of them these bar dye tops but they're great when you're doing makeup because it really sort of it, there's no sort of like neckline to distract you from what's going on here so um, to give me a base because obviously I'm going to use that pigment on my mobile lid so to give me something to work on I'm going to crack into my slush palette uh, from September Rose uh, I have got this here this is the this is the cardboard sleeve this came in I doubt you can be you can read that but I have got a discount code which is BOMBER in all caps and that gives you 10% off any spend over 10 quid on their site. It's non-affiliated. I do not earn from it. Um, in fact, she actually offered um, to send me some money because she had so many of you using my code. And I'm like, no, do you know what? You're a startup UK indie brand. I would rather my code is non-affiliated because then people can genuinely trust what I'm saying because there's no kickback for me and also I would rather you ploughed that back into the business and grew. When you get to the stage that you are mahoosive, maybe we'll think about an affiliated code but for the time being it's non-affiliated, you save 10%, I have the feel good factor of um, spreading the word about a very lovely lady and her if you've not seen my other uh, videos using this very beautiful palette um, and the mirror is actually a really really good quality mirror as well it's not one of these just bung it in for the sake of saying there's a mirror in there um, and I also like that you can actually fold the packaging right back as well because obviously when I'm talking to you I'm looking at my viewfinder and my mirror that I've got just here. Now, um, let's get you zoomed in and I'll have a chat about what's happening eye-wise at the moment. <clears throat> now, um, I don't use an eye primer because I find that using a concealer and setting it with a translucent powder works absolutely fine for me. Um, see if we, there we go, that's the white balance sorted out now. <clears throat> Remains of the cold, thank you husband. Um, <clears throat> now. When I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile eyelid, so I do not have a hooded eye. However, I have got very deep set eyes, so I do have a certain amount of um, <clears throat> similar problems in that um, when I put shimmer on here, um, you know, if I put my 
brush there you can see there's like an equal brush width here that tucks itself back in so I always get shimmers transferring up onto the lid I have tried glitter glues I have tried um, I even tried eyelash glue <clears throat> mixing pigments setting spray I always get transfer up onto <clears throat> my upper lids but because it's tucked back in the crease nobody really spots it now when I am doing my crease I can actually follow my natural eyeball shape if you've got a hooded lid you're not going to be able to do that what you need to do <clears throat> really sorry my voice is annoying me I really hope it's not going to annoy you too much get a flatter brush like this whatever your first crease colour is going to be pick it up on this and with your eye open just gently mark out where you need your crease to fall now obviously this will reduce the amount of space between your crease colour and your brow two ways around this you can raise your brow when applying the makeup which gives you a little bit of extra space or you can go in with a slightly more tapered brush. Now I'm going to start off with this one. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is really, really bugging me. All of you who love my voice are probably really hating this video right now. Right, this is actually, it doesn't have a number on it really helpfully. It's one of the ones from their I Slay collection, the Morphe ones. Um, and I actually really like these. You've got five brushes for I think it was 18 quid in like a little gold pouch and these brilliant cleaned them loads of times I think I lost two bristles from this one over the years and I've had this yeah just over a year now I'd say you can see it's very loosely packed it's circular from the top and it's quite wide here it's quite loose here now if you have got um, the issue that you've got the hooded lids and you've had to move your crease up then start off this is actually a tart brush start off with one still loosely packed still circular but a lot narrower here so you're still going to be able to blend the shadow out nicely and buff it out uh, and get those lovely soft edges but it won't be spreading quite as far because the head of the brush is smaller, okay? Right. On my eyes at the moment, I have used my Revelation Pro concealer in a C1 because this one is ever so slightly tacky, even when it's dry. Um, before you powder it and I have set it with Coty Airspun translucent extra coverage I really had to think about that then so that it, there's no there's no tackiness now okay so let's bung some colours on that will complement that beautiful pigment so that I can show you how lovely that is right I have got my colour switch here for tapping off into and for changing the colours on my brush. And I think I am going to go in with... Do you know what? As the pigment's called Pink Lemonade, there is a shade in this palette also called Pink Lemonade. So I've got to use it, haven't I? That's the shade I'm going to go in with first. I'm going to pick some of that up on the brush, tap off any excess. Now, always hold the brush right at the very end because it means you put as little pressure as possible on your eyelids. Um, I have the issue that this eyelid moves a lot more than this one does because this is the eye that I'm blind in and it was pulled around an awful lot when I was a child. You can see I've actually got permanent creasing here that just... Oh, excuse me, now I've got the hiccups, marvellous, which doesn't appear on this side quite as pronounced. <clears throat> so, we're going to start off 
on the outside edge and we're going to initially do a windscreen wiper movement through our crease. Now for me as I said I'm following my eyeball shape. If you've had to lay a line down then just run along that line. Okay. So you can see when I open my eye you can still just about see it because but you can I can't see a thing now you can see how wide that pink stripe is which shows you how much gets hidden in my deep set eyes but one benefit of having deep set eyes is you do have a nice lot of lid space to play with right I'm gonna go back into that pink lemonade and pick up there's a little bit of kick up in the pan but you can pick that up for next time round tap off now this time I'm going to do little circular movements because that, where I'm 44, my eyelids move. Where I've lost a lot of weight, my eyelids move. Genetically, if you've got looser, I, I'm not going to say saggy because that's a horrible word. If you have looser eyelids, you may also find this tip helpful because circular movements moves the skin on the eye around gently enough that you can get pigment pretty much everywhere so you don't end up with little tiger stripes which I will demonstrate on this eye here. So again starting from the outside just little circular movements along our crease line in towards the nose. And when we get here we're going to lift our brush up ever so slightly, reverse the direction of the circles and come back again. And when we get to our outside edge, we go back to the original direction, going up just a little fraction more, and bring it back in towards the nose. Now, I normally go to within four or five mils or about a brush width from the lowest part of my brow because I like to put a nice bit of highlight in here, especially where I've got very, very flat brows. I don't have any natural arch to them at all. Um, I give them an illusion of an arch by plucking the undersides here to make it thinner and then I pop a highlight on just to give the illusion of a nice youthful arched graceful eyebrow. Now we are not done with our blending yet. We could be done if we wanted to but we're not because you can see there's still a little bit of patching. Um, I have issues here and here both sides because of uh, creases that I have coming through so I just have to work a little bit harder just on these corners just to make sure the pigment is totally blended out now I've completely tapped all of the colour off with this I'm not adding any more pigment in I'm just blending what's already on the eye alright so I'm just going to do any areas that I feel need a little bit of extra help just going to once I'm happy with the shape that I've got and if this shape doesn't suit your eye then have a play around for a shape that does suit your eye you may want to go lower down than I am you may want to go higher up than I am you might want to take it further if you know if you've got a an eyebrow that is you know comes out to here you may want to bring just the top corner out slightly it's your face it's your artwork you do it how you feel comfortable okay so again making sure I've got no more pigment on the brush what I'm now going to do is tiny windscreen wipers from the top down and then across a bit and come back up overlapping the first bit and then across a bit and come back down this is just to totally make sure we've not got any gaps anywhere it's all beautifully blended and we'll chuck a few twirly whirlies in if we feel like it. Twirly whirlies. Mmm, I'm fancying chocolate now. My American viewers probably have no clue what a twirly whirly is. Uh, it's um, a, ca a chewy caramel bar with chocolate on. Ruff. It's lush. It does get stuck in your teeth though. You can't have one of those before going to the dentist. Because no matter how well you floss, there's always a bit of caramel left somewhere. And the dentist always finds it. It's weird, in my mirror, 
this is looking perfectly blended in my viewfinder it looks like I've got a patch here um, I really haven't though that's very bizarre I do get a little bit paranoid about this top corner as well <laughs> I kind of need someone to go do you know what Mama? That's, that's quite enough now you can stop and do the other eye so let's stop and do the other eye I'm basically going to repeat exactly what I've just done. Um, I don't speed my tutorials up because it used to really wind me up when I was first learning that I had to sort of pause my screen all the time and then my screen lock would come on and oy vey. Right, you can see now what I mean about the tiger stripes from those permanent creasing that I have there. Now unfortunately I actually have to gently pull my eye out to deal with those. Um, I don't advise you to do this uh, if you can get the pigment on by doing circles then that's a much better option than pulling your eyelid around because obviously that's just going to increase the looseness that I have there already. Um, but unfortunately I've found from experience that's the only way I can actually get pigment onto that bit. So, again, picking up a bit more pigment, and by a bit more pigment I mean a lot of, you, I love this, there's not a huge amount of kick up in the pan, but you do get an awful lot of pigment on your brush. Don't be scared of colour. Because, just because you are, you know, maybe a little bit older, yeah, I'm 44. Uh, do I just stick to nude colours now? No. Do I avoid shimmers? <laughs> no. <laughs> do I wear whatever the bloody hell I want to? Rock it with confidence and get a shit ton of compliments? on my eyeshadow yeah as it happens I do um, I was at the optician yesterday getting my eyes tested and as well as loving my glasses that I got uh, they were also loving my eyeshadow that I'd done and in fact the optician said oh you've got you because obviously you have to tell them what you do kind of thing during the day so they know how you use your eyes like, you know, are you going to be on a computer screen, are you driving, etc. Um, and she said she was going to check my channel out. So, lovely opticians from Specsavers in Aylesford. Not sponsored. Mm, Aylesford Retail Park. Uh, thank you for opening a branch in the Sainsbury's so that I can actually get to you easier because my other branch is in a pedestrianised section of the town and being disabled I can't park close enough to get to it. Um, so thank you so much for being very convenient to opening up a branch in a supermarket where I can park in the disabled parking right outside. Super. Uh, but yeah my eyesight has not changed since 2001 so I'm absolutely convinced um, I've sorry, I've done my twirly whirlies, I've cleaned my brush off, I'm now back into the windscreen wipers to make sure we have the perfect blend. Like Yorkshire tea. Hmm. Hmm. Um yeah, I my eyesight, apart from being blind in the one eye, which sort of pretty much happened when I was thirteen, um, my eyesight was unchanged for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden in two thousand and one, well, between 99 and 2001 I had to work in an office that had no natural daylight and unfortunately it was strip lighting which if anybody's worked under that in an office you know how that flickers and I was working on a monitor and it was the days that it was still CRT monitors so they flickered as well um, and literally within six months of working in this office with no natural daylight all of a sudden the eyesight in this eye weakened um, 
I complained and they actually moved me into an office that had daylight after that, which was nice. Um, and I can't prove, obviously, that that's what has caused my degenerative um, eyesight because it happened at the sort of age that your eyesight does change anyway. But normally, when your eyesight starts to weaken, it continues to weaken gradually for about between five and seven years, and then you get stuck at whatever prescription you're going to be at until you start getting to the stage where your arms are getting longer and longer and longer because you then need reading glasses as well. Um, my eyesight went to uh, minus 1.25 in this eye in 2001, and is still minus 1.25 in 2018. So it's changed once and then for the last 17 years it hasn't changed. So I am absolutely convinced that working in that office with no natural daylight is what's buggered my eyesight up. There you go, a little bit of chit chat about me. Um, do I want to darken this up with more pinks or do I want to darken this up with purples and blues? Should we do pinks? Shall we stay with the pinks? Yeah, let's stay with the pinks. Right, I'm going to go into... I'm actually going to change the brush. I'm going to go in with that tart brush, which is the slightly more tapered one. As you can see. If you're already using a brush like this, go to a brush like this. A pencil brush, but that still has movement because you can see you have a smaller area that's actually going to be touching your eye. See? Full of advice, mate. Full of advice. Right, I'm going to go into Cherry Lime Aid, which is a beautiful colour. And I'm initially just going to stamp this on the outside corner of my eye. Lovely. And pick up a bit more and initially do the windscreen wiper just like we did last time. And this time when we blend it, we're not going to go up the eye. We're literally just going to blend along that line. Just add a little bit of depth through the crease there. Gently buff the crease there, the corner. And just really gently, still reversing the direction of the brush, but not actually going up the eye with it. So you can see then, we've got the darker one here and the lighter one up here. I'm going to pick up my fluffier brush again with no pigment on it. I'm just going to buff very gently where the two colours meet because I want it to be a seamless transition. I want it to gently get lighter as it goes up the eye. And you can see, I hope, the difference there that adding that deeper colour has done. And you know what we're going to do now? Bang on, right. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Um, if you're in a rush in the mornings or you have a short attention span or you're confident enough with actually applying it, you just want to see the colours that I'm using, uh, then there's a widget down there somewhere, or I think if you're on a mobile, there's like three dots up here. Um, and you can click that and you can speed me up. Now, I am probably going to sound like a chicken, particularly with the coughing that I've been doing today. I've been wah, wah, wah. Um, which, admittedly, you might find amusing on your way out in the morning. Now, I didn't tap off properly here, as you can see, but I do always get more fallout with this side because the skin on this eye moves more. Um, normally, I would do my base, my, my foundation and stuff before I do my eyes. Um, but if I'm going for a dramatic look like this, or I'm using um, a loose pigment, I will always do my eyes first, because I know that I'm going to get fallout on this eye, 
no matter how well I tap off, simply because of how loose the skin is on this lid. Again, picking up our first fluffy brush with no pigment on it, and really gently buff where the two colours meet. Now, if you're finding that your pale pink at the top is starting to buff away, you can always pop a little bit more pigment onto this brush when you're blending the two colours together to reinforce the lighter pink at the top if you need to. Okay. Um, do I want to deepen that up a little bit more? Do you know what? I think I actually do. So I'm going to get a pencil brush and I'm going to go in to Blue Curacao. I'm just going to pop that on the outer edge here. This has got a wee bit of sparkle to it, but don't be scared of sparkle, folks. Everyone's like, oh, you've got to avoid sparkles and shimmers in your crease and everything. Especially as you get older, it highlights all the wrinkles. I'm sorry, if you've got wrinkles, you've got wrinkles. Bloody well put glitter in them and show the damn things off, because you've earned those wrinkles. You've lived a life and you've earned grey hairs or stress highlights. Be proud of your... your signs that you've actually lived a proper life, you know, you've, you've dealt with stress, you've had love, you've had heartbreak, you've, you know, you've laughed, you've cried, you know. I'm just going in with this tart brush again just to blend that out a little bit. You can see I'm just doing the outer edge and about halfway along the, uh, the crease this time. And with the darker pink, I was blending it on the line, or just above the line. With this one, I'm blending it on or slightly under the line, so that most of it disappears up into the crease. So you can see there like that. You can still see the two colours. I just wanted a little bit more drama. Boom, boom, boom! On the outside edge. Oh, I have missed being able to film. I've not had a voice for about ten days. Um, it's so nice to get back to filming again. I mean, fortunately, I always um, have films in reserve so that if I am unwell or, you know, like when we lost mum or lost grandma and I just really wasn't up to filming, um, you still had content because you will get at least three videos a week from me, usually more. Um, but at least three. Uh, last week he got three because I couldn't do any pre-filming. So I was using films that I'd already done. The previous week I think he had four. Um, two weeks before that you had like five, six. <laughs> so just depends. But I mean this time of year I've got so much stuff that I've bought which normally I would have already reviewed but because of Darling husband in sickness and in health and you know what's yours is mine and mine is yours deciding to share the cold. You know what, darling, next time you just be selfish and keep that to yourself, huh? I've got um, a Smashbox palette, I've got three Revolution palettes, one Halloween palette, two of their new ones. Um, <laughs> I've got a palette which was bought for me. Um, claiming to be a Natasha Denona, but um, I don't think it is. It's, um, I think it's slightly too small to be a Natasha Denona, but I've done what I do whenever I have um, kind of copy makeup, um, and I've tested it on my arm yesterday for 24 hours and I shall, I've put the swatches on again today for another 24 hours just to make sure that I'm not going to be allergic to anything in the palette before I even think about putting it anywhere near my eyes. Um, I've got quite a few Wet n Wild palettes that I need to review. I want to do a whole almost full face of Wet n Wild for you. 
Uh, that was meant to have been done a while ago when Beauty Bay first got wet and wild in. Um, but unfortunately my palette got left outside by Hermes um, and I'm on a main road and there's there's no safe place really to leave it. And uh, by the time I got back from, I think it was having my nails done actually the day that was delivered, um, the parcel was nowhere to be seen. So I kind of lost patience with them and ended up ordering the stuff that I wanted from Amazon instead. Picking up the initial fluffy brush that I used because I really want to soften this blue out. So I'm just going to just going to blend while I waffle at you really. Um, so let me know which, in, in the comments section, it'd be super, super helpful um, if you could let me know which palette you want to see next. Um, I've got um, the Be Very Afraid palette, which is the Halloween one, one of the Halloween ones from Revolution. Um, I've got two of their new ones, I think Be Obsessed and Be In Love With or something palette. Be bold palette or something. Um, I've got Wet n Wild ones to do, I've got a Smashbox one to do. Um, and although I said I wasn't going to buy the Jacqueline Morphe Vault, I had so many requests from people that they wanted my opinion on it because they know they're going to get the truth from me. A friend of mine was selling her one. So um, I've actually got the vault as well. So let me know in the comments what you want to see first. Do you want the uh, Revolution Halloween palette? One of the Revolution new palettes? Or the vault? Let me know what you want to see first and I'll do that one. Um, before I do any of the others. Um, I was hoping to get quite a few Halloween looks filmed for you. Um, but I was planning to do that this week, but obviously I'm playing catch up from being sick. I have got one Halloween um, look that I actually pre-filmed back in March, don't ask. Um, so I'll be putting that up probably the beginning of next week. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get another one for you. Uh, but if I can't, you will at least have one Halloween look from me. Ooh, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like. Right, now I get to have fun with the pigment. Right, <clears throat> let me just pop the slush down. Let me zoom you out just for a minute. Ooh, yep. And let me just deal with my mucky fallout that I've done. Now, there are a number of ways you can apply pigments. Um, and I have actually been testing this pigment out all of last week when I couldn't film. I have tried this on various different concealers, both set and unset. I have tried them on um, Urban Decay eyeshadow primer, set and unset. I've tried applying them with a Mario Badescu spray and I've tried applying them with my usual pigment boost from Obsession. I have also got the Revolution Pro mixing liquids which I've tried. Now there are pros and cons to all of the different ways of using them. The two ways that I found worked best for my eyes were either to uh, both times the set concealer worked far better than an eyelid primer did or an unset concealer. Um, the two best ways that I found to get the best shine from the pigment and the longest wear time from the pigment was either to apply it with um, this pigment boost or to apply it with the mixing liquids. Now, <clears throat> I have got, this is actually a kid's plastic, oh hang on, I'll give you a bit of ASMR. <laughs> so 
Well, it comes in useful if you start to get a little bit warm and don't want to put your fan on because it blows all the stuff off the wall. But <clears throat> now this is great for mixing pigments in because, as you can see, it's all individual little wells. So you can mix pigments to make your own colour. Fabulous. Um, so, now the only drawback that I found when applying with this uh, Revolution Mixing Liquid, the only drawback I found with this <clears throat> was, and it could just be that I put it on too thick on my lid, but after a about sort of seven or eight hours I noticed it was starting to crack and if I did that little bits of pigment would flake off. There was still pigment enough underneath that you couldn't really see from a distance that I'd lost some of the pigment there um, but that's possibly because I, w I did actually put it on too thick. So what I'm going to do I'm going to mix a bit of pigment up in here <clears throat> just to show you how easy it is and I will do one eye with the uh, mixing drops and I'll do one eye with the pigment boost. I will try to remember to take photographs throughout the day. If I forget I'll put photographs up of the looks that I did last week so you can see how they actually faded through the day and I'll make sure that it's this one <laughs> and this one that I put up. So, starting off with, again I use these little, these are actually um, nail art brushes that I picked up super cheap from eBay. This is the number two, which is a nice fine brush as you can see, which is great for getting into the teeny tiny little neck of this beautiful little bottle which really makes me think of Harry Potter and like mm -hmm. right okay so take the little cork stopper out um, I actually prefer to lift this out on the brush and then drop it into the little well in my child's painting mixing tray. And I'm going to do two different wells because obviously one of them I'm going to have mixing drops in and the other one I'm just going to pick up the pigment with a wet brush. I think that's about equal amounts of pigment in both well. But I can always add more. Now bearing in mind that I've done about four or five different looks with this, you can see that there's still an awful lot of pigment in here. So this pigment goes a long way. At the moment, you can't buy the pigment. Um, it's being won. Uh, in terms of, they very often do like um, competitions. One of them was like a scavenger hunt, where um, it's like they they challenge you to get a photograph of yourself with some grass. Um, you know, get a photograph of yourself with some bleach or um, a plate or a glass or a knife or a corkscrew. Um, and whoever won, whoever got the you know, the, the slowest person each time got eliminated, and then whoever won at the end of it got a bottle of that pigment. So it's just, it's that, that's what I mean about it being a really fun group. So, I've unscrewed the lid of this and depressed the plunger a few times to fill the pipette. And then I'm just going to drop a few drops of that into pigment and you can't see what I'm doing can you and just mix it around until you get a paste now this folks is what foiling your lids is just you know wetting your brush and applying it that way is not foiling your lid that's just 
applying the pigment on a wet brush. Foiling your lids means you mix it until, I don't want to tilt this too hard, it's actually a liquid. Which means your pigment goes a lot further for a start. So let's quickly zoom you in. Yep. And I'm going to start off with this teeny tiny brush so that I can get right into the corner. And you can see there that it's just, it's very, very easy to apply when you use a mixing liquid. But I'm going to try not to make the mistake that I did last time. I'm going to try not to put quite as thick a layer on. Last time I'd, I'd actually done it a little bit thicker than this. I left it more of a paste than a liquid. This time I've made it the proper proper liquid. And just So you can see there, I hope, just how well that applied and how easily it went on and just completely covered even this darker pigment here from the slush palette, completely covered it. Okay, I can't see a damn thing, I really hope I'm in focus and in the screen. Right, I'm actually going to pause you for a minute because I want to let this dry a little bit so it doesn't actually crease too much before I do the other eye. So, don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm back. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off so that there's no pigment that's been mixed with the mixing drops on the brush at all. Because that, of course, would not give us an accurate representation or a proper scientific experiment as to which one looks best by the end of the day. I'm just going to screw the lid back on that before I knock it over and end up with mixing fluid everywhere. And I'm going to get my Obsession Pigment Boost and making sure the spray is around the right way. Drench the brush. And I'm going to go into the dry pigment here. Pack that onto the brush and apply it to the other eye in a very similar fashion. To be close, my camera can't. There we go. So you can see it looks very, very similar when you apply it. So it really is up to you. You don't have to have mixing drops in order to apply <coughs> a pigment. You can just keep wetting your brush, dip it into the dry pigment. You've coated your brush and you can see it goes on in a remarkably similar fashion to using the mixing drops. Personally I think you can see here you can see slightly more of the blue still showing through. So I do think that the mixing drops give you... Um, oh, I've buggered that shape up now. Well, never mind, I'll put some more blue back over in a minute. Um, I do find that 
the mixing drops give you a more opaque <clears throat> initial coverage. But in terms of finished effect, once this is dry, it will look very similar. I'll just show you what I did. I literally just did this. dry the pigment on my eye and you can see there's not a huge amount of difference between the two finishes in all honesty uh, at the moment this one looks slightly brighter than this one uh, be interesting to see if it stays like that once this one dries down a bit um, Let's see if I can cover up some of that blue a little bit more. Right, I'm going to sit here looking like a pirate while this dries. Uh, and I'm going to disappear off and put some foundation and stuff on. And I'll be back to finish off the under eyes. See you in a moment. Hey, I'm back. As you can see, all foundationed up. <laughs> Went a little bit nuts with the contour and bronze and blush today, but let's pretend that hasn't happened. Right, I'm going to go back into slush to do the bottom lash line. Let's zoom you back in again. Otherwise, you yeah, can't see what I'm blooming well doing. So, I am going to go in with this brush that I showed you earlier, a nice flat one. This again was from that Morphe set. And I'm going to pick up... Hmm, which colour should I pick up? That's a good question. Oh, you can see now they've dried down, that they're both the same shade. This is no longer brighter than this one. But this one hasn't quite covered the blue, whereas this one is a lot more opaque. So there's the difference between applying it wet and foiling it. That is the big difference folks. Um, I think I'm going to go into Cherry Lime Aid, which was the deeper of the two pinks that we used. I'm just going to run that along the outside edge of the lashes and the beauty of this brush is you can get right up underneath your lashes it's great the same distance each side isn't it yeah right clean it off and then I'm going to go into pink lemonade which is the first pink we used not the pigment the pink lemonade from the palette and do the other half you can see I'm coming quite close to the tear duct there because I want quite a dramatic look. Clean the brush off. Pick up the tart brush that we used. Make sure that's absolutely clean. And I'm going to just pop into Cotton Candy, which is a slightly lighter pink in this palette. And really gently just buff all the way along that line just to you can see it spreads the colour out slightly and just softens the look. Um, I have particularly watery eyes, uh, so I've not done eyeliner today. Normally I'd put a big old wing on with this. Um, and it's also why you don't see me put... I've got liners that I can use on my waterline, but I tend not to use them that often. Um, because where I've got such watery eyes, they either end up coming off or they collect in the tear duct just here and look horrible. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to buff both those bottom lash lines out 
with the cotton candy. Ho ho! And that's us done with the slush palette because the rest of it is going to be done with highlighter. Now, uh, I am going to go in. This is a NYX Duo Chrome and it's called Snow Rose. This is a, a bang on dupe for Jeffrey's Crystal Ball. Uh, it's white based with a pink lilac shift. So I'm going to pick this up on another sort of concentrate on the brush, please. Not, not, not bother. Thank you. Uh, again, it's a nice thin flat top brush. And we're just going to pop that up under the tail of the brow. Helps if you actually put some on the brush. There we go. As I said, I like doing a brow bone highlight because it makes the brows lift. Um, it gives me an illusion of having more of an arch to them than there actually is. And I think it just ties the look together nicely. Hmm. And now I'm going to using the same one, go in around the tear duct here, the inner corner. It's a really pretty, pretty highlight this one. And actually before I had the uh, pink lemonade pigment I very often used to use this wet across my lid as my shimmer shade. Now I've got the pink lemonade pigment. <laughs> I don't need to. Hmm. Pretty, 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 pretty. Let's zoom you out a little bit. Because as you know, I always do all my powder work before I put my mascara on because I don't really get powder on my mascara, basically. Uh, this is a Zoeva uh, 105 Luxe Highlighting Brush. Uh, I much prefer the, let's do my nose first. I much prefer these to uh, fan brushes um, when you want, some, actually I say that, it does depend on the highlight that I'm using. Jeffrey's highlights, for example, um, are very, very... Um, although they're a powder, they're, they're almost oily or creamy. Um, and if you use a fan brush with them, or a brush that doesn't have a lot of substance, you do tend to end up with hard pan on his highlighters. But if you use a brush that's got a bit more pigment, a bit more depth to it, like this, you actually get a really beautiful finish. Um, and even if it does go to hard pan, you, you still at some, it, somehow you're still able to pick the pigment up um, using a brush like this rather than a fan brush. But then you've got um, a my for a Nikki Tutorials glazed donut highlight, highlighter. If I was to put it on with this, um, you could stand me at Beachy Head and I could be a lighthouse. Uh, that one is literally a fan. That's a fan brush job because it's so so blinding. Um, surprisingly though, Cloud9, which was um, one of her second highlighters, the uh, Pinky Peach one that she did with Ofra, isn't as, doesn't have the same oomph. Uh, that one I do apply with this brush rather than the fan brush. Um, I mean, obviously if you wanted a more subtle highlight then use a fan brush. but. I don't do subtle highlights. I don't just glow to the gods. I glow so brightly they can't see what I'm up to. <laughs> Look at that glow. No such thing as too much highlight. I had someone say to me a comment once on one of my films. You have too much highlight. You are looking like Tin Man from Wizard of Oz which I replied, thank you, that is my aesthetic. 
<clears throat> if I'm not glowing like the Tin Man and you can't see me from space, I haven't got enough highlight on. So, there. Right, I'm going to go in because my eyes are being very watery today. This is a Barry M waterproof mascara. Spe specially designed brush to lift and to curl lashes. And it's called That's How I Roll. That's lovely, isn't it? Sorry, I've gone very Welsh on you again. So, having zoomed you back in, this is what it looks like. It's one of those plasticky brushes. So it's not a natural bris bristle brush. That's difficult to say. Brush or brush, brush or brush, brush or brush, brush or brush. Um, now I normally coat the top of the lashes first, and then wiggle it into the base of the lash underneath, and very gently blink through. So you're pulling your lashes through the brush. This is great for when you're learning to put mascara on because you're much less likely to poke yourself in the eye. It's also great if you're applying mascara to somebody else because you wiggle it into the base of their lashes and go blink. <laughs> That's what I did with my goddaughter when I did her makeup for her prom. Her primary school prom. Oh my god, two of my godchildren now. The two eldest, Kieran and Caitlin, are both at secondary school or high school if you're in America. Um, it's it's scary, you know. I remember, I remember seeing the 4D scans of them when they were, you know, when uh, when Claire had been cooking them for about six months. Um, and now they're well, all of my godchildren are stunningly. Gorgeous. Uh, the boys are the spit of their dad and the girls are the spit of their mum. And they are wonderful. I mean, I pull up outside and uh, kids spot me from the window upstairs and they come rushing down, Oh, Angie, 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 Angie. Which is great. I just, I love my godkids. I can rave about them for hours and drive you mad. Right, lipstick time. What do I fancy lipstick wise today? That is a very good question. What do I feel like putting on today, lipstick wise? Let's have a look. What have I got in here? If I was an organised person, I'd have decided this before I started, wouldn't I? <coughs> Tell you what, let's go in with the... I feel like a bit of a gloss today. So this is the Elf Alyssa Ashley collab in Nude Rose. I missed this first time it was released, but I managed to catch it on the second release, which was great. Let's just whack a bit of this on. I'm not sure it's actually the right shade to go with this eye look, but never mind. It's weird, it doesn't smell of anything, but it does taste. Sweet. To uh, let my hair down, quite literally, and um, I will be back, and we will finish off with a setting spray. Don't go anywhere. I'm back. Took my hair down, 
changed the lippy because I decided that gloss really wasn't working. I've gone for another NYX one, another duochrome to go with the highlight. This is the duochrome lip shimmer lip gloss in shade Gypsy Dreams, which I think much better suits this look. So, setting spray time. I'm going to go in with my Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day in Jasmine. Now, I have got very sensitive eyes. I'm shaking this as I speak for emphasis. I swear I should, I've got Italian blood in me somewhere to go with the Welsh and the Yorkshire. Um, this is very highly scented. Personally, I have to let it dry fractionally. So I will be going in with my fan before I open my eyes <clears throat> because otherwise it can it can be such a strong scent it makes my eyes water. Now it's literally only for the first few seconds while it dries down. Once it's dried down it's absolutely fine um, and I've had the peach one of these and it wasn't it didn't do the same thing so it at the moment it's just this jasmine one that does it so if you're struggling with this one and you're finding it's a little bit strong for you when you spray it on have a fan or something or just just give it a couple of seconds before you open your eyes so we will hold it at arm's length and liberally douse the face and be bougie with a fan. Now, most people see absolutely fine now, just those few seconds and not bothering me at all. Uh, most people would stop at this point. However, regular viewers know that I am not most people. I'm a little bit extra, so I like a little bit extra because when I've spent all this time putting it on, I want it to say it with me, stay. Put. So, we repeat. And again, we repeat. This is the finished look using the pink lemonade pigment. As I said earlier, um, I will try and remember to take photographs. I'll put them up here now. <clears throat> These are photographs through the day so you can see how well that pigment actually wears. Uh, if I forget, if you're looking at the photographs and it doesn't look like today's look, then I forgot to take the photographs, so I'm using photographs from last week when I tested them out. Uh, and uh, one side is the side with the wet application on a set concealer and the other side is a foiled application on a set concealer. And, hey, I was just doing my foundation check-in. Uh, it's been about five hours since I finished doing everything. Just wanted to zoom in and just give you an update on how these are wearing. This is the side that we applied, or I applied just with a wet brush. You can see it's still, you can really start to see the blue through it now. Uh, and it has actually cracked and fallen off a little bit here. Interesting. This side, however, um, the blue's starting to come through at the edge, but not as much as it is this side. This is the foiled side. Um, and so far, this doesn't appear to be flaking or splitting because I did actually, I made it a bit of a looser mix this time. Last week it was more of a paste, this time I had it more as a liquid. Um, so I could actually put a thinner layer on and that, that seems to be the best way to use this. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely go with mixing it to a liquid. Um, 
literally like the consistency of milk uh, and applying as thin a layer as possible because so far these are looking really lovely I mean f back from a distance if I zoom you back out again you know it still looks absolutely lovely it's only when you get really close up you can start to see um, you know the, the flaking here and where the blue's starting to come through but um, I just wanted to give you that really quick update because as I was doing a check-in for the foundation I thought I might as well do a check-in for the pigment too <laughs> Bye bye. Hey, yeah, I know, I know. I said after the last check in that I wasn't going to do any more and back to usual programming and you were going to get the end of the video. Okay, so I fibbed just a wee bit basically because I wanted to come on and show you this. I've just done my final check in for the foundation. Um, I just wanted to show you that um, this hasn't actually got any worse, so I haven't lost any more really from here. Um, and the blue's not peeping through any more than it was at the five hour mark um, and this one is still looking absolutely great so my recommendation would be to use some kind of mixing medium um, even if you actually use you know squirt your setting spray into one of these little dishes um, and mix it to like a milk consistency before applying it because that has definitely by far outstripped any other test that I've done with that pigment. Okay, having jumped on again for a second time, genuinely, because uh, I've got my uh, vitamin E oil and I've got my eye makeup remover, because my face is screaming at me, this makeup's been on for 10 hours, take it off. So, I'm going to take it off, and you will now see the end of the video. <laughs> Bye. And back to me. Hello. So, what do I think of this pink lemonade pigment? I have properly put that little thing through its paces last week. Um, I really, really like it. I mean, you can see when you apply it foiled using the mixing medium. It goes on so opaquely it can cover that dark blue that we put on without the need to cut your crease. It's, it gives you a beautiful pink shimmer but depending on how the light catches it you suddenly get a flash of gold. Um, which is so beautiful, especially in low light. Um, Hubby and I had a nice candlelit meal and he actually commented on how my eyes were just... Every night, every so often he's like, oh, I keep seeing gold sparkles on your eyes, that's really pretty. Um, you know, straight men noticing something like that doesn't happen very often. So for him to comment, it obviously looked super, super pretty. Um, I love the way it wears through the day. Uh, but it's not, it's, it's shimmery enough to give an impact, but it's not so shimmery that it settles into fine lines emphasising them. So if you have got slightly looser lids or crinklier lids or crepey lids, you can still use this pigment without the fear that you're going to end up looking like someone has sprayed tinsel into every single crease that you have got. So at the moment the only way you can get hold of one of those is to win a challenge in the Pink Lemonade group. So Pink Lemonade group is linked down there. You will know if you were uh, if the link for some reason doesn't work, if you're on your mobile for example and it's not working, the logo on this bottle, which I'll stick up here, that's the Pink Lemonade logo, so you know you found the right group when you see that. And I'm sure the girls in the group would be delighted to have new members. And you don't have to be a girly to join. 
You don't have to be any age, you don't have to be any colour, you don't have to be any particular sex. If you want a really friendly, chit-chatty group that happens to be a little bit obsessed with makeup, then you need to come and join us at Pink Lemonade. It's, it really is one of the friendliest groups that I've ever been in. Because let's face it, some makeup groups can get a little bit bitchy. So far, we haven't... The only bitchiness we've seen are people sharing pictures of their dogs. And by dogs, I am referring, of course, to the canine variety. The king of which is, of course... Sheila Wolf. Isn't he stunning? Mm. Anyway, this is meant to be about the makeup. So, I really hope. Put too much settings around, my hair's collapsing. Um, I really hope you found this helpful. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button for me. Comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications so that you get told every time I upload another one of these videos. Don't forget to check out my girlies that are in the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group. They are all linked below. They are all fabulous. If you enjoy my content, Pretty damn sure you're going to enjoy theirs too. So, talking of other videos, I've got quite a lot to choose from. So why don't you have a wander through my profile and watch a few more of mine. Then go and watch a few of theirs. Right, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous now. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.